What is up guys? So I wanted to do a updated comparison of the LG G8 and V50 for my new subscribers that have been asking and I've done this comparison before but uh, people want to see it you know updated or whatever and for you guys asking yes I went ahead and got the G8X uh, people guys were just like uh, spamming it I see it in the comments all the time um, so I went ahead and got that uh, for you guys it should be on the channel here uh, this week and uh, yeah there's a couple other phones in the, um, that you guys have been asking for but I just be patient and uh, kind of a smaller channel so it takes a little bit of time but um, we'll get them eventually. So let's get started here. G8 V50. So let's talk about the price point. Both of these phones are, first off, they're just very similar um, phones to begin with. And the price point for these phones are pretty similar. So you can get a V50 uh, brand new for around 300 bucks. Um, I recommend the Verizon version. If you're not in a 5G area, you can go ahead and get this Sprint version. Or if you can find like an unlocked version on eBay, I've seen those as well. Uh, the G8 is going for around the same, uh, brand new around 300. I saw it at 400, but I have seen it at um, 300 brand new. The price kind of fluctuates, but um, this phone refurbished or renewed is very cheap around uh, 220, 250 around that price range. So uh, very cheap flagship phones here. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the design. Both phones are pretty much identical in terms of design. They both have uh, pretty much the same setup with the flat camera design which looks beautiful. It still has a very elegant looking look to it. They're both glass and metal phones. They're both IP68 dust and water uh, resistant as well. Both physical fingerprint scanner on the back. Same branding. And uh, honestly, you know, about the same thickness as well. Uh, obviously the V50 is going to be the taller phone. And uh, same button layout, power button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Down below, USB Type-C, both have stereo speakers as well, the same uh, volume rockers, and uh, your Google Assistant button. Now, I guess the first big difference here is obviously form factor. So, you have a more compact design on the G8. So, the G8 is for somebody that is looking for a phone that you can sort of like reach the top of the screen without having to shimmy it too much. So on the V50, if you have smaller hands, this only applies to people with smaller hands. You have smaller hands, then you might find yourself like doing that a lot and the little shimmy thing. Um, so the G8 is for somebody who wants sort of a more compact experience. If you want a bigger phone, then obviously you would get uh, the V50 here. All right, so display quality, again, is not too different. So we have a P OLED display on the V50, 6.4 inches. It's a 1440p display, 538 for the PPI. On the G8, it's slightly smaller at 6.1 inches. It's a P OLED display as well, HDR10, 1440p. 564 for the PPI so you have a slightly higher PPI on the G8 but you really can't really tell the difference it doesn't look any sharper and color wise uh, they both look pretty much identical the only difference here is the you know display size the color everything looks the same you have the same notch cut out there's no real difference with the display quality on here even though the G8 has higher pixel count you still can't really tell um, as far as image quality goes, but they're both two excellent beautiful looking displays um, You know 1440p's displays are kind of rare now They're taking them out of you know a lot of flagships like the s21 We saw a lot of them are coming with 1080p the v60 um, You know, I guess that's to preserve battery life or whatever, but uh, these 1440p displays look excellent they look beautiful when it comes to um, just looking at the icons, watching 1440p content on YouTube is a nice experience. Uh, colors, the deepness with the blacks, these are really beautiful displays. If you want to hide the notch, you can hide it with the uh, software as well. Now, both of these phones have Android 10 on them. They're expected to get um, Android 11 this year. I know the Velvet got Android 11 in Korea, so we are expected to see that uh, you know roll out on these phones probably later this year. And um, so let's go ahead and talk about the specs. So pretty much identical specs as well. Snapdragon 855 on both. Micro SD support on both. 128 gigs of storage on both. 6 gigs of RAM on both. Performance wise, these are 
fairly identical. Now let's go ahead and run the Geek Bench scores because I actually never did it. Maybe we get a different score, but we should get pretty much the same score. Alright, so we do get a higher score on the V50 on the single and multi-core score. So let's do a speed test. Maybe the V50 is going to be a little bit faster than the G8, but um, let's see here. So let's open up Subway Surfer. Three, two, one. Yeah, so the V50 does seem to be a little bit faster than the uh, G8, which I never really noticed until you put them side by side. Yeah, it is slightly faster, but not by, you know, a noticeable amount. Yeah, yeah, oh wow, I got it there too. Um, let's try Google Earth. Yeah, so the V50 is going to be a little bit faster, so the, uh, you know, the scores deem true. And uh, one of the things with these flat back phones with no bump is that you see them, like, slipping and sliding everywhere. I'm like, look at that. It's crazy. Like, they are very slippery, so I probably would recommend, like, a case for these phones because they can easily slip off a table or something like that. Let's go ahead and try, um, where is it at? PUBG. And when you're gaming on both of these phones, pretty much identical performance. Um, you got the, the same, you know, CPU, GPU. So gaming on these phones at this price point makes these easily some of the best gaming phones that you can get because of how powerful they are. So as you're going to see, we can pretty much play games at high settings, uh, no problem. So we're, in, uh, so we're in PUBG here, and just to show you guys the graphics... You can see we're on uh, Ultra HD. Uh, the GA can do Ultra HD as well. I just have to download it in the lobby. It says I didn't do that. But a graphic performance is going to be pretty much the same. And games look beautiful. They run great um, on uh, these phones. So if you're looking for a relatively cheap gaming phone that's going to give you some great graphic settings, these are the phones to look at. I mean, they have beautiful displays and you can play games at you know high settings and it's a really good experience I've never had an issue with heating or anything like that so these again are very solid for gaming let's go ahead and check out multitasking and see how well they're gonna do let's open up a few more applications uh, here and then let's just go through them and see which ones um, stay open if all of them stayed open Let's see if um, Subway Surf still open. Play Store, we know that's going to be open. Google Earth still open. Let's see. Play Store. PUBG should still be open. PUBG still open. Let's see YouTube. Yeah, so these phones are fine when it comes to multitasking and stuff like that. I've never had an issue like struggling with uh, multitasking on these phones, bouncing in and out of applications. They usually, you know, stay open. Alright, both these phones have stereo speakers. Now, the speaker is under the uh, glass on the G8, the one up top. Um, so, let's go ahead and see which one sounds better or louder. Max volume, both of these. Starting with the V50.
Um, honestly, they both pretty much sound the same in terms of quality and loudness. I really cannot tell the difference at all. I'm trying to. Yeah, it's 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 almost identical. So in speaker, uh, you know, speaker quality is gonna be excellent on both of these phones. Uh, they both have great uh, stereo speakers. All right, so let's talk about the additional features, which again are pretty much the same. Again, we have IP68 dust and water resistant. We have NFC physical fingerprint scanner and LG. You know, they got a they went away from the face unlock. The GA does have really good face unlock um, as well. Uh, but they went away with the face unlock on like the velvet and the uh, the V60 for some reason. Uh, but the physical fingerprint scanner on both of these phones uh, work fine. They're both very fast. I've never had an issue uh, with the fingerprint scanners on these phones. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the camera quality. So again, you know, I keep saying this, but these phones really are, you know, almost identical. But there is a, a big difference here. Um, so you do have on the V50 a triple camera setup, a 12 megapixel uh, standard, 12 megapixel telephoto, 16 megapixel ultra wide, 4K video, and then you have a dual camera setup on the V50 uh, up front. Uh, so that's an 8 megapixel uh, sensor, and then a 5 megapixel wide, and that shoots in 1080p. On the G8, uh, you only have a dual camera setup the 12 megapixel standard and a 16 megapixel ultra wide. So basically you will be able to get really crispy um, portrait mode photos on the um, V50. It does give you that really cool blur effect uh, that looks really nice. So you're missing that, you know, that uh, depth sensor on the G8. Um, but you do have, uh, again on the G8, a 8 megapixel selfie. So you are missing the wide angle lens on the G8 as well up front. So if you take like group selfies, um, you know, the V50 is going to be, you know, ideal for that. Um, but you do have, again, 1080p video up front for the uh, G8's cameras. Uh, so I'll show you guys the pictures that I've taken with both of these phones. Uh, pretty much, the image quality is pretty much the same. Like I said, there's no real difference that I can see. There's not, I haven't looked at, you know, each photos and been like, oh, the V50 is so much better. It's just, they both pretty much take the same uh, photos, great image processing, uh, really natural colors, um, good detail, dynamic range. They're both excellent, excellent cameras. All right, lastly is battery life. Let me get a wipe down on these guys. You did, they, they do pick up fingerprints like crazy. Um, battery life. So again, I've never used the V50 on 5G because I've never been in a 5G area. Uh, but battery life, I know I sound like a broken record. You would think it would be better on the uh, V50, but it's really not. They both average around 8 hours and 30 minutes of screen on time. Uh, so you have a 4,000 milliamp battery, 18 watt fast charging on the V50. You also have wireless charging with the G8. Uh, you have a 3,500 milliamp battery, but you actually have slightly faster charging on the G8 at 21 watts. And you do have wireless charging as well. As far as battery life, like I said, almost identical. I think the V50 would be slightly worse if you're on 5G. Um, that's just my guess because you're just using more power. Uh, but as far as battery life, these are two excellent phones for battery life. So again, very slight differences here. Pretty much identical phones. It really comes down to the camera. So do you want those extra cameras or not? Or do you want a bigger or a more compact phone? That's really what it comes you know, down to. Everything else is pretty much identical on these phones. So Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.